welcome back to Dr. Frank Builds a Boyfriend. In the last episode, we desecrated graves and built ourselves a fancy little boyfriend. And in this one, we're going to get our revenge, question mark. Let's go. Don't pick it up. Oi, oi, oi. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Study. It's in my inventory. Uh, I didn't... Nice sturdy globe. Nice reminder that there's these things outside my door if I ever stop. Stoop low enough to want to leave anyways. Hmm. Uh, but it's pretty heavy. I don't want to pick it up. Yes? The weight makes me instantly regret this decision. God, this is impossible! Should I put the dictionary... No, I wanted the cloth. I'm going to die. Yeah, you can put it down. Perfect. Mm. Let's see. Uh. Oh. To the graveyard! Handful of graves, previous night, we should grab Mr. Ball had a chance. I didn't grab the penny! Strange. To the church! What the fuck is this? An elaborate stained glass window, it shows a sad looking boy surrounded by a black basilisk kid. What crap, I never understood how anyone could believe such illogical stories. Yes. Donation box holds a large collection clothes. It's probably for the needy. Luck of luck, I see a large pair of pants that could most likely accommodate a large... Uh, something. I think I, uh, I qualify as needy in some definition of the word. I'll just... Yoink! They don't fit the legs hanging out. Eh, close enough. Roses. Wait a minute. But didn't this used to be a Chaldean church? Strange. Woo! Turn around to leave with my contraband pants and toe. Except. Ah! Oh, I see we meet again. Good morning, Mr. Frank. Doctor. Excuse me? I'm Dr. Frank. Oh. Well, then please do forgive me, Dr. Frank. It's nice to finally meet you. My name is Celios. I just moved here. Meh. I took over care of the church from the last priest. Mm. Mm. I see you found something to use in our donation box. Ah, I... Uh, <laughs> Dr. Frank, no worries. That's what they're there for. If you have found use for them, then they were destined to go with you. Oh. Uh, thanks. He gives me a cute smile. Wait. I mean sickly sweet smile. Since I just moved here, hmm, I was hoping that someone might be able to show me around. I gotta go! Run out of the church as fast as possible. Phew, made it. He just about cornered me. Gotta keep an eye out for that guy. He's suspicious. He's super suspicious. Uh, you know, end up a town. You can't go just yet. All right, let's go get our boyfriend. I got your pants. I can't believe you actually found weird tentacle dick appropriate pants. Oh, is that what that's supposed to be? Where did you find those? The church. I don't even want to know how they ended up there. Pants, pants. Is that it? That's it? He's ready to go. Come on, let's go, boyfriend. Dr. Frank, Dr. Frank, please wait. We don't have time for this, Eags. The conference is starting in a few minutes. My boyfriend isn't there. But sutures. Leading my boyfriend by the arm, I slam open the front door. To my dismay, standing there is, oh, Dr. Frank. Ah! Ah! I hope now it's not a bad time. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! Shit! Field trip, field trip! Who's this? 
This is, uh, wait a minute. Maybe this would be a good opportunity to perfect the presentation I'll be giving to the conference. <clears throat> yes, this is dashing, handsome, absolutely sexy fellow here. Meow. Is my boyfriend. Bye bye. Mm. Uh, no, don't say that. I love my papa. <laughs> um, I'm not into that. I swear. There's no need to hide your interests, Dr. Frank. I'm not into that! Ah! My boyfriend slowly moves on his own, waddling up to where the new neighbor is standing. Ah! Oh, hello, Mr. Dr. Frank's boyfriend. What's your name? Ah! Uh, you seem like a very happy fellow. I'm glad that we were able to meet. I hope you treat Dr. Frank well. He seems like a nice, cute fellow. Ah! My boyfriend suddenly clamps Celos on the shoulders. His face intense. Mama. Stop doing that! I'm so, so sorry. Mama, mama. <laughs> your boyfriend is so cute, Dr. Frank. I wouldn't mind being your mother if you needed one. He doesn't need a mother! Or even a papa, for that matter. No. Papa. Mama. Gah. I don't have time for this. We're going. I reach behind me, grab my boyfriend's arm, and shove past Celos, and make our way to the Grand Conference. Except... <sighs> the arm doesn't quite have the resistance I'm expecting. Instead, I look behind me and see that I'm holding half an arm. Dr. Frank! I had ripped my boyfriend's arm off! I slam the door shut, ignoring the muffled noises I can hear from the other side. Oh, shit! What time is it? The conference started about five minutes ago. I look down at the arm, the skin seems to be slipping off. Looks like it's rotting. What do you mean, rotting? Well, it is dead flesh. We didn't soak it in formaldehyde or anything. That would have made it look hideous, and I can't work with a hideous body parts, eegs. Field trip. We'll just sew another one on real quick. Go fetch me one of the other fine but slightly uglier specimens from the lab. Eegs. Oh, please don't yell at me. I got rid of the extras. What? I returned them back to the graves. I was feeling so guilty. You... We had desecrated people's graves for those pieces, and you weren't even using them. At least I could do was return them. Mm. Well, what the hell are we supposed to do now? Bring my ultimate boyfriend on stage while he's got a gaping arm wound dripping all over the place? It would match the blood stains on his shirt, at least. For the last time, it's coffee. Mmm! I have to come down. The conference just started, and it'll go for another two hours. Dominic presentation isn't until the end anyways. We'll just crash his presentation. So we need to dig up another arm. Again? No, I'm not- I'm not doing that. What else am I paying you for, Eegs? Go dig up that arm! Ah! Angry bad! My boyfriend inserts himself between Eegs and I, cutting off any argument that we might have started. Fine, I'll do it. You stay here and babysit. What a thing to say about your boyfriend. I leave. Find your boyfriend a new arm! Do 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 do. Boink. We're gonna go in here. Oh, uh, mm -mm. I can't believe his arm fell off. He's such a beautiful man, too. I guess I should do one up quickly, although I should probably find something to dig up. Oh, uh, also. Crap, I made eye contact with him. Ah, run! Nice to see you again, Mr. Frank. Doctor! Oh, please forgive me. It was awfully rude, especially after you took the time to correct me the previous time. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Mm hmm? Ah, well... If you ever think of anything, feel free to let me know. Suspicious! Suspicious as if that's not going to be your love interest. Eh. Uh, and pick it up. Yes, please. That's so. This sucks. Use. Meh. My hypothesis 
As to what would happen if I were to force someone we grow on Susie is that Susie would grow two heads. Now theory that's cool, but in practice I can only see that ending with someone else's death and headache, so I'll pass. Oh Yes, please. What oh his windows. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Oh. Use. I slide towards Susie, keeping my head low. Hey, want to see something cool? The plant hisses at me and I bring out a certain magazine. He goes silencing the sparkly muscles on the cover. I can actually leave it behind if I'm able to get closer to a certain equipment. He grabs the magazine in his jaws, opening up full spread image. He no longer pays me any mind. Yes, please. To the house. To the place. To the place. To the use on the graves. Mm, I can't just start digging body parts with him standing there. Well, fucking hi, you're back. Uh, did I get it right this time? Uh, yes, you did. Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, what would make you leave the garden? Haha. <laughs> you have an interesting look on your face, Dr. Frank. Yeah, so, um, hypothetically, if something big happened, would you leave? Excuse me? Uh, I mean, like, if something happened, would you go check it out? Well, I suppose. Great! So, what things would you leave for? Do you want me to leave? Oh, no, no, I'm just saying that. At, at, I'm not saying that at all. Then why are you asking me this? No reason, absolutely no reason. Brr! Stop. Uh... Pick up. Uh, yes, please. That too! This sucks! To the house. To the here. To the church. Uh, to the inventory. To the weed. To the use. To the flowers. I quickly dump all of the powder on the roses, trying my hardest not to breathe in the dust. Vines, lion maids, and other weeds start popping up immediately, covering up the roses where they were. That'll do. Now just let this away from the grid. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, Silios! There's a whole bunch of weeds in the church. They were in that little box with your roses. Meh, my flowers! He rushes off. Okay. Use. Use. I move to dig again when something strong grabs the end of my shovel. Papa! Boyfriend? Me too, me too. He grabs the shovel and starts digging in the grave with even only a single hand he puts to shame my own progress. He wanted to come find you. It's Eags. For some reason, I'm happy to see him. Ah, oh, so cute. What a great boyfriend. Wait! Did anyone see him? Dr. Franks, you live in a nigh impenetrable mountain range. No. No one saw him. Oh, good, good. Ah! It seems that the monster has found something while digging. He walks over, picks up a severed arm that, he's, that had quickly reburied in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, now, how do we get this on again? My assistant starts to hand me a stapler for the arm, but then pulls back after a second thought. Are you sure about this, Dr. Frank? Uh, what? Come on, we have to get going. Give me the stapler. I mean, you're doing all this to get back at Dominic, right? Have you been paying any attention? I'm taking my out my I'm taking my revenge on him who and those stupid university types who Right. I just I think you're putting too much energy into this. Too much? I reach out for the stapler, but he pulls back. So you get your revenge and then what? I reach out again, but he dodges me. Doctor Frank, then what? Then, then I'll be happy and they'll recognize what amazing work I've done and... Again, I reach for a stapler, but no avail. Iggs, we don't have time for this! When will you have time for this, Dr. Frank? I've tried asking you two days ago and a week before that, but you just kept, kept avoiding the question. What are you going to do now after you take your revenge? Well, then everyone will love me and they'll accept me back into the university and Dominic will be destroyed and that he'll have to leave the country. And what if that doesn't happen? Dr. Frank? Uh, I, I don't know, Iggs. 
Now can you please give me the damn stapler? He hands it to me and I take it without looking him in the eye. Arm, arm. I quickly reattach it the best of my ability. Now he's ready for the conference. And only a few minutes to spare the presentation. Let's go. We arrive before Dominic's presentation, the conference breaming with people. And I think all these people would have been looking upon my research at me if only things had been different. If only Susie hadn't been the one unfortunate encounter with the headmaster, Aaron. If only the professor hadn't threatened my rep to report my work to the Queen's men. I could have been up there. Ugh. Now where's that asshole? Just then, the current presenter goes behind the curtain, and for a split second I can see a certain brown-haired man I could never forget. That asshole! I charge off, pushing through the crowd, Iggs and the monster on my heel. We make it back a stage just in the nick of time. You! He sees me and takes a step back. Oh, wow, what are you doing here, Frankfurter? Ugh, what am I doing here? I'm here to take my revenge! Dude, what? You stole my research, everything I worked so hard for, and now you're presenting it to these people? And, and, uh, what? Bro, can we talk about this later? I'm like five minutes away from doing this thing. God, fuck you, you broke my heart! Dude, are you still hung up about that? Wh what? I mean, it was like, what, two weeks tops? Well, fuck you, and now, now I have someone even better. I glance behind me to present my new and better improved boyfriend, but he's still off in the crowds. Him and Eegs are fighting to slip behind the stage. I made I made an entirely new creature, a new life form. He's he's better than you. He's more handsome and more affectionate and listens to me when I speak and just a million times better than you and ever than you are in every way. Cool. So I'm gonna go do my presentation now. But aren't you intimidated? Speech is that how I've completely moved on from you and you are nothing but a mistake. Yeah, that's cool, bro. So I'm gonna go do my presentation. He turns to leave, but I follow on his heels. Your awesome research? Don't you mean my awesome research? You stole it from me. That's that's why I'm doing this, you see. Taking my revenge. Yours? Um, I mean, it's based on your research, but it's still my experiment. Don't worry, I cited you in the bibliography on the, of the paper. Suddenly the star cloud. Uh, suddenly the crowd starts clapping, and the man pulls back the curtain, motioning for Dominic to go onto the stage. Oh look, I gotta go. But that's my research. I rush to stop him from going out there, from claiming my my research as his own. But then, Mr. Frank, I turn around to see it's Headmaster Aaron. What the hell are you doing here? Iggs has finally caught up with the. Monster and both out of breath. What the hell is that? He gestures towards the monster who is staring at his missing hand. You, you people, you fool, stand back. I did the impossible. I have an incredible experiment that will revolutionize the nature of humanity. I created, I created the first, the world's first artificial life form. And I'm going out there and changing this loveless, cruel world. That man, he stole my research. My research, hear me. I'm not going to let you step all over me again. Mr. Frank, Mr. Nilon is an esteemed member of our doctorate program, and any such claims of plagiarism are to be taken seriously. If you truly wish to pursue this further, and this isn't yet again another one of your outbursts, you can take it up with... Just then, the crowd bursts out in sound from the other side of the curtains I turn to look. There's a bird flying around somewhere. Somehow, he'd been able to reanimate it. God help us. All of a sudden, people start moving. Stagehands are running off, whispering amongst themselves. Don't mention this creation you've brought with you to anyone, Mr. Frank. What? But I'm here to present. Would you shut up for once? The queen herself is in attendance tonight. Is she? It's been all over the papers! Uh-uh. Suddenly, a few armored guards rush past, shoving their way onto the stage where the bewildered Dominic stands. The headmaster pulls me back further out of the sight lines of the ominous-looking guardsmen. Look, Mr. Frank, we've tolerated a lot of your shenanigans in the past, despite what we've told you multiple times regarding your legality of your work. But what is the invention in the face... 
What is the invention in the face of... Despite multiple warnings, you have continued to pursue illegal research. And now you have passed the same illegal research onto one of our students. The guardsmen have begun to round up stagehands lining up next to Dominic, most likely to arrest him. If you don't say anything, they won't arrest you too. Two? Some yelling breaks out on stage. It's Dominic yelling at the guardsmen. One of them pushes the other and suddenly the three of them are fighting. Our eyes lock. It's not mine. It's, it's his. He makes a lunge towards me, but one of the guardsmen hit him and he falls to the ground. I suggest you leave. People have started sc to scream. What in the world's even going on in the audience? Dr. Frank, we need to go. But my revenge. Iggs grabs my hand and pulls me away. We make it out of town just in time. There are fires dotting the horizon in the direction of the Hindenburg's University. Or Hindenburg's University. We're lucky to have escaped, you know. Oh, butterfly. The monster runs off to chase an insect. So what now, Dr. Frank? Now that the university has realized the error of its ways and Dominic has been forced out of the country, and that everyone loves you and nothing bad will ever happen again... I don't know, okay? I don't know what the hell I'm going to do now. The university will never accept now. I glance towards the fires that have broken out in town. And that asshole, he didn't even... Can I make a suggestion? Ugh. Since you didn't say no... You've grown up in this town your whole life, right? The mansion was your grandmother's from what I remember. So what? So this is your hometown. It's the only place you've ever lived. And maybe it would be good to get some perspective. I mean, everyone here knows that you're the weird guy who lives in the creepy mansion in the woods and is obsessed with illegal research. You don't have to put it that way. There's a program I know just on the border of Espington that specializes in plant regeneration. My boyfriend went to the university there and mentioned it. I know it's not uh, exactly the same research as what you've been doing, but you could possibly find some use for it in your own experiments. So what? Are you saying that I should just, I don't know, go there instead? Well, yes. So I have to go to a completely different country to even find a place that would recognize my genius? Dr. Frank, I'm saying maybe it's time to get over to get out of your house and stop obsessing over your revenge, over making other people like you. Not to mention that if you managed to blow up the laboratory building again, it would be much easier to avoid repercussions if it happens in another country. But the people of Espington are so stuffy and snotty and... Ah, watch your step. Butterfly, butterfly. Monster comes charging over again, chasing a bug that's clearly not a butterfly. Just then I realize... Celios has followed the monster over to us. Ah! Oh, I see we meet again, Dr. Frank. Uh, can we help you with anything? Papa, butterfly, pretty. Oh, I just happened to see your cute child running here through the church grounds. I was a bit worried about him falling into a ditch or even one of the unearthed graves. I haven't a clue as to where they ca came from. Ah, and also, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but were you just disgusting Espington? Uh, yeah, we were. I'm actually from Espington originally, in fact. If there's anything you need to know, I'd love to help. Mm. That's very generous of you, but it was just a thought. I'm not sure if Dr. Frank is even going to move there. Yes, I would. I would love to know. Please tell me everything. <laughs> very well. Please feel free to ask me anything, Dr. Frank. Butterfly pretty. The monster shoves a dead insect into my face. At a later time, of course. We ought to get, uh, we ought to be getting back to the house. Right. I wave goodbye to Celios as we head back to the mountain. Two months later. Ask me that question again. Uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Having cracked the code of animal regeneration and about to be entering clinical trials on testing on humans. Maybe you should leave out the human experiment part, Dr. Frank, but otherwise great. I think you're ready to go. Do I look okay? Maybe put more gel in your hair? There's no way that's going to stay down for the whole trip over there. But I've already used a whole jar. Oh, maybe try not to touch it then. 
Sure enough, a moment later my hair reverts back to its original form. Ugh, so much for that. Don't worry about your hair, Dr. Frank. I'm sure you'll do fine. Ah, uh, yeah, if you say so. Are you ready to go? I think Celios will be here in a few minutes. He's helping you cross the border, right? Mm. Dr. Frank? Uh. You seem kind of out of it there for a second. I don't know. Still feel apprehensive? Mm, I just... What if I'm just making a fool of myself? Or they already know who I am and are going to reject me anyways? It'd be pretty cruel to invite someone to an interview if you know you're going to just reject them anyways. And even if that were the case, that would say more about them than you, right? If you say so. I'm just... I don't know. I keep thinking maybe it'd be better if I just stay home and work on experiments. It just feels so weird to be doing this. Why? Because, I mean, I don't normally do this, you know? It's dumb. I'm sure I look dumb to other people. I have better things to do than dress up fancy and have people with inferior intellects tell me what to think. What did we say about your manners? Oh, sorry, I won't come out in the- it won't come out in the interview. Good. Just give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? I suppose. I take a deep breath. Yeah, at least I can gain some intel as to the Espington scientific process while I'm over there. And you won't be alone either. I'm sure Celios can help you go to where you need to be. Mm. Suddenly there's a knock on the front door. Visitor, visitor! Ah, monster. Don't open that. Too late. He's already rushing off to open the door. Ah, oh, well, at least we know who's at the door this time. Are you ready, Dr. Frank? I happen to glance at my reflection, reflection in the mirror. I set my face to a determined look. It's something to try, if nothing else, a way to waste time, but I have no idea what's going to happen. Maybe something will, maybe not. Although I don't want to admit it to Eags, the fact that having something to do besides trying to impress the university that has turned its back on me felt like a breath of fresh air. I smile. Ready as I'll ever be. The end. Ah, oh, how adorbs. Click. Oh. Ooh, what are these extras? Oh, looks like you haven't found the secret ending yet. Do you want a hint? Uh, sure. Find a use for that gigantic dictionary in the study. And with that information you gain from that, make sure to ask some questions to certain someone. You'll only be able to ask them the specific question in the second half of the game. After the monster boyfriend's arm has been ripped off. And yet another uh, prerequisite for this ending is that you need to have asked this person something about the church that Dr. Frank found suspicious. Good luck. You know, I almost asked him that, but I still don't know what to do with the book. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm done with this game. <laughs> uh, it was a cute little game, and it wasn't bad for a free little doobie-doo. Um, you know... It's cute. It's actually very interesting how it touches on, you know, not obsessing and sometimes getting your revenge or feeling like that's what you need to do isn't always what's going to make you feel better in the end. Um, but, yeah. Anyways, uh, if you like this game and want to play it for yourself, I'll try to leave a link down in the description below. Maybe you could figure out how to get that special super duper secret ending. Uh, and in the next episode, we're going to play another game. So I will see you then.